11. That is how many people were behind the majority of book challenges in the last school year. That's according to a breakdown put together by the Washington Post, which also found, surprise, surprise, that most of those objections centered on titles by or about people of color and the LGBTQ community. And all of this comes as Banned Books Weeks, Banned Books Week begins on Sunday. And I'm honored to welcome an author who knows a whole lot about controversial books. Leslie Newman. Her latest is out this week. It is called Always Matt, a tribute to Matthew Shepard. We're going to talk about your book in a minute, but I want to start with a children's book you wrote nearly 35 years ago. Heather Has Two Mommies. It was ranked the ninth most banned book in the 90s. And now here we have this coming, book banning with a vengeance. Compare to us what it was like back in the 90s and today. I love that book banning with a vengeance. That is exactly what is going on right now. So, you know, back in the day, what happened is some parent would get upset and they would talk to the principal of the school and it wouldn't be like this big blown up thing with school boards being hijacked and people taking hundreds of books out of the library and not returning them, and just all kinds of crazy things that are happening now that are really disturbing. Why do you think it's happening now, right? In theory, uh, as we move on, things are progressing, but they're not. They're worse. They're much Why? worse. You know, if I knew the answer to that, <laughs> um, I think that the previous administration unleashed an enormous amount of hatred, and that has just carried over till today. I really do think that's what's going on. I want to talk about these 11 people, because that's what was the most surprising to me. Just 11 people are kind of in charge of the majority of this book banning. And I, I'm careful what I say, because in some ways, they might actually have good intentions. But that is clearly getting warped in, in, a, in a terrible way, and things aren't going well, right? Is there a middle ground to be found? Well, you know, there's a certain road that's paved with good intentions, right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I understand people wanting to, quote unquote, protect their children, but what are they protecting them from? You know, freedom to read is such an integral part of this country and of democracy. To, to see that being threatened is very frightening and very dangerous. How is it that it's just this tiny group of people having this massive influence over schools, libraries, books all around the country? How did this happen? So, you know, I'm, I'm really puzzled by this, and I'm not sure it's actually 100% accurate because there are people banning books or challenging books, you know, statewide, like in Texas, in Florida, the governor of Florida. So I'm not sure it's just these 11 people. I think it's a lot more than that. Well, certainly become that. I want to talk about this book. We're embarking on the 25-year anniversary of Matthew Shepard being brutally killed because he was gay. Talk to us about your connection to him, why you wrote this book, and why now. So... I was the keynote speaker for Gay Awareness Week in 1998 at the University of Wyoming, and Matt was on the committee that decided to bring me to his school to talk about my book, Heather Has Two Mommies. Which Did you get to know him? No, because I arrived on campus the day he died. So I got to know his friends. Um, and when I gave my talk, because I still wanted Gay Awareness Week to go on, all the LGBTQ kids sat in the front row, and they left an empty seat. And I kept looking at that seat. So I feel this connection, and I feel a an responsibility and obligation an honor and a privilege to use my voice to amplify Matt's story, because he's not here to do that. His mother fears that this country is starting over when it comes to LGBTQ rights. Do you agree with that? Starting over in starting a bad way. In a bad way. Yeah. Well, you know, Judy and Dennis, who are such incredible people, I mean, who else would two months after their son was murdered so brutally create the Matthew Shepard Foundation so that others would not have this fate? She never thought that the foundation would need to be in existence for 25 years. She thought a couple of years, things would move in the right direction, and that would be it. But obviously, that's not what's happening. Well, if the road to hell is paved with good intention, how do we take 
this road that we are on right now, if we are starting over, if the attacks are only increasing, how do we find the right path? Another good question. I think that it's just really important to understand that you have the right, whoever you are, to decide what your children are going to read, how you're going to raise your children, but you don't have the right to tell everybody what they can and can't read. And that is what has to be understood. And the only way it's going to be understood is if you keep writing and we keep reading and learning from you. It's a pleasure to meet you. Thank, Thank you, you so, so much, so Stephanie. Much.